In this video, we're going to um, introduce complex numbers in the complex number system. And so, kind of the basics of complex numbers is we understand there's no real number solution to the equation x squared equals negative 1. Because think about it, whenever you square a number, if I squared 5, I, I would get a positive 25. But if I squared a negative 5, a negative times a negative is also a positive. So there's no, there's no real number that you can square that would give you a negative. And so what you got to think is... Um, in order to solve an equation like this, we kind of need to introduce a new idea. And so we're going to extend the real number system to include solutions of equations to this type of problem. And the number of i is defined as such. i is the square root of negative 1. So if we're thinking about this problem up here, if we're trying to solve it by traditional means, we take the square root of each side and we get that x equals positive or negative root of negative 1. So this, this is going to be our i. Okay, We're going to call this value i and we're going to use it to solve problems. So normally a variable can be anything, but if you see the variable i, it's almost always referring to the root of negative 1. And so if you were to take like this i value and you were to write a number in the form of like 3 plus 4i, okay, um, that's called a complex number. This would be considered the real part, and this would be considered the imaginary part. Okay, This is called an imaginary number. I know that sounds silly, but if it has the i, if it's the square root of negative 1, it doesn't exist in the real number plane, so we call it imaginary. And so let's look at this complex number system. Um, I'm going to kind of fill this out. You may have seen this before, but uh, what we're going to start is we're going to start with what we call the natural, or sometimes you see them called the counting numbers. And this is just uh, starting with 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. And then the next group up would be the whole numbers, which is kind of a silly distinction, but the whole numbers is really just the, the natural numbers plus zero. And after the whole numbers, uh, you get into what's called the integers. And the integers would be all of these numbers, we're still not talking about decimals, but it'd be the positives and negatives. So this would include like your negative three, this would include your negative 50, this would include your negative 207. All the negative numbers would be integers. So if you're talking about the number 2, that number is a natural number. It's a whole number and it's an integer. But if you're talking about the number negative 50, it's an integer, but it's not a whole number and it's not a natural number. Okay. The next step up would be the rationals. And the rational numbers are including all of our fractions. Anything can be written as a fraction, anything that can be written as a decimal. Because if it's a decimal that stops eventually, we can write that as a fraction. 0.212 is equal to 212 thousandths. Okay? So um, even if it's a decimal that repeats, like 0.3 repeating, that can be written as a fraction. So it's a rational number as well. But our rational numbers are our fractions and our decimals. Um, and then what you run into is you run into the irrational numbers. And these are numbers that can be written as fractions. They're, um, you know, pi is a famous one because it's a decimal that goes on forever. It never repeats and it never terminates. If you take the square root sometimes of a non-perfect square, like the square root of negative 2, that's an irrational number because that decimal goes on forever. It never, it never terminates and it never repeats. So, and then another one you'll see a lot is you'll see e a lot. So let's call those our rationals. And all this stuff that I've talked about together, these are called our real numbers, Okay. These are our real numbers. That's your real number system. But then we got this, our oddball category out here. We got our imaginary numbers. And your imaginary numbers, that includes your i, or if you want to say 2i or something like that. These are your imaginary numbers. And any combination of real numbers and imaginary numbers would be a complex number. So if I said 3 plus 2i, that falls into the category of complex numbers. Now, one more little thing I'd like to say about this, and then this video will be over. A property that we need to know is that if I have the root of negative a, that's going to be equal to i roots of a if a is greater than zero. Let's, let's talk about what this means. Okay, so if I take the square root of negative seven and I wanted to simplify it, here's how I want you to think of this. Okay, I want you to think, think of our radicand. That's the same thing as negative one times seven, which could be written as the root of negative 1 times the root of 7. But then this right here, this root of negative 1, we've already defined that to be i. So I just want you to know that using this property, if you have the root of negative 7, you can jump immediately 
to i roots of 7. Just like it shows here, if you have the root of negative a, you can jump to i roots of a. Let's look at this root of negative 20. So if I were to do that, I could do negative 1 times 20. Um, and you might say, oh, well, that's just, you know, I kind of already see where that's going. You might be saying, okay, well, that's just i roots of 20, where you'd be partially correct. But remember, we can simplify our radicals as well. If I broke 20 into 5 times 4, we know that that root of 4 is really just a 2. And so if I rearrange these, that would become 2i roots of 5. So just um, the idea of this slide is how do we jump from here to here? How do we simplify our imaginary number? And basically simplify it like a normal radical, but if you have that negative under your radical, it's going to manifest itself as an i outside of the radical for the reasons shown in these two examples.